In this video, we're going to be talking about all of the basic rules of exponents. And remember when we're talking about exponents, we can have an exponent here like x to the fourth, where x is the base, what we call the base, and 4 is the exponent, this small number in the upper right hand corner. It means that we're going to multiply x by itself four times, or it means we have four factors of x multiplied together. So if we expand this out, it's x times x times x times x. If we collapse it, it's x to the fourth. So what happens when we do addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division of exponents? Well, in all cases, we have to be really careful about like terms. For example, when we add terms that have exponents in them together, both the bases and the exponents have to be the same in order for us to add them together. So if we look at this first example, 3x squared plus 2x squared. The base here is x and the base here is x. So the bases are the same, which is good because we need that. And the exponents, we have 2 and 2, which is good because we also need the exponents to be the same in order to add these together. So basically we have 3x squared added to 2x squareds is going to give us five of them, 5x squareds. So if you're going to do addition and subtraction, the bases and the exponents have to be the same. In this case, we have x to the third plus x squared. Our bases, x, are the same, but our exponents are different. We have three and two. These are not like terms, so we can't add these together. We can't simplify this at all. What happens when we do subtraction? Well, again, we're looking for similar bases. So we have x and x for our base, and then we have exponents of four and four. So because the bases and the exponents are the same, we can combine these as like terms. We have six of them. We're subtracting an implied one of them, which is going to leave us with five of them. So five times x to the fourth. But in this problem, despite having the same base, they both have a base of x, we have different exponents. We have a four and a three. And because we're doing subtraction, we can't combine these. We can't simplify this at all. What happens when we multiply two values together where exponents are involved? Well, here, in order to simplify, all we care about is that the bases are the same. The exponents do not have to be the same. So here we have base x, and base x, and we know already that's all we need to multiply these together. It doesn't matter that the exponents are also the same, we just add them. So we have 3 times 2, these are coefficients on our x squared terms, we multiply those together. So 3 times 2 is 6, so that's going to be the first part. And then we have x squared times x squared, and if we look at that, x squared times x squared, what we're going to do is add the exponents together. And the reason is because if we expand these out, we know that x squared is two factors of x multiplied together. We're multiplying that by another x squared, so we're multiplying that by two more factors of x multiplied together. Altogether, this is x to the fourth, which we know because this essentially becomes the rule x to the a multiplied by x to the b is x to the a plus B. We just add the exponents together. So 2 plus 2 is 4. We get x to the fourth. Here's another example. We have x to the third times x squared. Remember, there's an implied 1 coefficient in front of both of these. When we multiply 1 times 1, we get 1. So there will be an implied 1 coefficient on our final answer. x cubed and x squared, we just care that the bases are the same, and they both have a base x, so we know we'll be able to multiply them together. We have x to the third times x squared, and remember that's going to be x to the 3 plus 2. So when we simplify, we get x to the fifth, and that should make sense because we have three factors of x multiplied by two factors of x. Adding them all up, we get five factors of x, so x to the fifth. The quotient rule for exponents tells us that in the same way as when we multiplied, we didn't have to have the same exponent. When we divide, we also don't have to have the same exponent. We only care about the bases. So here we have like bases. We have base x for both of these. The exponents happen to be the same, but that doesn't matter. We're just going to leave this 6 in our final answer, so we'll get 6 here. And then what we're going to do is subtract the exponent in the denominator from the exponent in the numerator. So the result is going to be x to the 4 minus 4. This is the 4 from the numerator. This is the 4 from the denominator. 4 minus 4 is 0, so we get 6x to the 0. x to the 0 is 1, so this is 6 times 1, or just 6. 
even if we have different numbers, again, we only care about the bases. Both of these have the same base of x, so again, we'll just keep our 2 in our final answer, and then we'll have x to the 4 minus 3 because we say numerator exponent minus denominator exponent. That's going to give us 2 times x to the 4 minus 3 is 1, so x to the first, which is, of course, just equal to 2x. What about a power raised to another power or an exponent raised to another exponent? Well, just like before in this example here, when we said x to the fourth means multiply x by itself four times, here we're saying multiply x squared by itself three times. So this is gonna be equal to x squared times x squared times x squared. And now we're really just back at this right here where we're multiplying like bases together and we add the exponents. So this is just the same as x to the two plus two plus two. Two plus two plus two is six, so we get x to the sixth power. What we realize then is that we can expand this and then add the exponents together using this rule over here, or we can just multiply these two exponents together. Two times three gives us six, and so we can do it that way as well. We can even do this when we have a negative base. So this problem here is telling us multiply three factors of negative x squared together. So this is going to be negative x squared times negative x squared times negative x squared. We can deal with the negatives separately. Remember, we can cancel every two negatives and they become a positive. So negative and negative become a positive. We're just left with this single negative sign here. So our answer will be negative. And then x squared times x squared times x squared, we know is x to the sixth. You can also think about it this way. When you have this negative sign inside the parentheses, it's the same thing as saying negative one times x squared all raised to the third power, and then you can apply this exponent to the negative one. Negative one times negative one times negative one is gonna give you negative one, which is this part right here. And then x squared to the third is gonna be x to the sixth, so you get this x to the sixth. And when you multiply them together, you get negative x to the sixth. So those are just some of the most basic exponent rules that you need to know.